So for conditional fields, it's pretty simple. Um, you would go to any record that you want to edit. For example, um, let's take the sales record. And let's add a custom field here that we want to make conditional, such as a, a checkbox. And we'll add a checkbox and we'll add a selection field. Um, oops. Confirm. So we can say a new selection, new check, that's fine. What you'll do now is you'll see this up here, invisible under certain conditions. The invisible property is only applied to records matching this field. So match all records and you can say if any other field on this record, for example, if customer field is set, then it will make this field invisible. Or if customer field is not set, then it will make this field invisible. And you can do the same for this. So if customer field is not set or any other field, right? You could say if the confirmation date is not set, if the um, invoice address is not set, make this field invisible or whatever you want there. So you can say, um, we'll just do customer again. And we'll say is not set and it will disappear and you can close. So now when you set your customer, It's a new database. Those two fields appear. You can see just like that. Now let's try it one more time. There they are. And they disappear. And they're there. So that should help you understand how you can play with that. It's all in Studio. Select the field. And then you can select the uh, conditions up here. You can say, uh, is invisible is um, is uh, required under certain conditions is read only under certain conditions and you can even go layers deeper right you can do automated actions and you can go and say that uh, maybe if the customer is um, if you know customer um, John Doe so trigger condition is on update if the update of the sell order means that the customer um, contains John Doe action to do, we could say update this record and have a field such as the, um, such as the new selection, have a value of true. And that's all codeless, right? Because you can now see when we test this, let's do another one. Let's uh, first create a quick customer. And we'll call the customer Bob Jones. And now I can go to my order, create, John Doe, fields are there, Bob, uh, Bob Jones, save it. And my new selection should have been true. Let me just test one more time. Oh, I know why, because it's John Doe and then save, and that would be marked as true. So you can see, um, let's try one more time just to verify. Bob Jones, save, nothing. John Doe, save, true. So you can see these automated actions are quite powerful in that way. Um, if I open them up one more time, see we have this one. So you can really get much deeper into the details here. Uh, if we create another one, we can say, um, you know, if country, equals something, do something else. Or here are all the actions we are able to do. We can execute a new Python code, create a new record, right? And that's powerful because if you confirm a cell, you can create a new object in anywhere else across the system. If you update this, you know, you can say update this record and here are the values of the, and you can choose any field across this entire model of the cell order and you can update it to have a certain value or you could reference a certain value or you could execute a Python expression assuming the conditions up here are met. Um, you can execute several actions. So I could you know, have a list of all my actions that I wanna execute here, such as action, and I could choose something. Um, I could also send an email based on a certain condition being met, add a follower, 
or create a next activity. So um, it has a lot of flexibility there. Um, let me know if that's what you're looking for.